Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to investigate surface and volume elements in a spherical coordinate system. If you are not familiar with a spherical coordinate system, I suggest you check my video on that topic. This is very important subject because these surface and volume elements in a spherical coordinate system are encountered throughout physics, atmospheric sciences and engineering. For example, a surface element in a Cartesian coordinate system is dx dy, where dx and dy are infinitesimal distances along these two directions. Volume element in Cartesian coordinate system is dx dy dz, where we introduce height dz. These concepts are somewhat more complicated in a spherical coordinate system because of the angles that we have there, because of the spherical geometry, namely. We will see in today's video that in a spherical coordinate system, volume element is, for example, r square sine theta d theta d phi dr. Well, that's already more complicated than the Cartesian coordinate system. Of course, r is radial distance from the center of the coordinate system or the center of the sphere. Theta is, uh, uh, we could say, an elevation angle and phi is an azimuth angle. Let's see how we derive these concepts. Consider a spherical coordinate system that is attached to this Cartesian coordinate system that has axis x, y, and z. And this spherical coordinate system will be used to describe, in this case, an eighth of a sphere. So we can represent it something like this. We are interested at finding volume element of this sphere represented here. Well, that means we have to take a surface on this sphere, surface element like so, and associate, so to speak, a certain depth to this element like so. And now this surface times this depth will be volume element dv. How do we find this volume element using spherical coordinates? Well, if this is the radius to this volume element dv, let's call it radius r, then this increment over here is dr. Moreover, in spherical coordinates, this angle over here is known as theta. And the projection of this length onto the xy plane will be used to determine the azimuth angle phi. Namely, I project this over here and this over here is the azimuth angle phi. Well, we see from this figure that dv will be this area dA times this depth dr. But what is this area dA? Because the area is very small, I can assume this is a square. This over here, you will see, is simply this increment d theta times radius r. That's the radian measure of an angle. So this over here, this side is r times d theta. This side as well as this side over here. Now how about this side, which is the same as this side? Well, we will find it using our projection over here. To find that, we know that this increment over here is d phi. So the only thing we need to find, therefore to find this, is this radial length. Now you have to know that this radial length is not r, because look, this over here is projection of this element, but we can quickly from geometry conclude that this radial length is r sine theta. How is that clear? Well, it's clear because if I take this radial arm, I can move it here. 
right? And now it's clear that this is angle theta, and therefore this over here is r sine theta, which is exactly what I wrote here. Therefore, this length over here, which is equal to this length over here, is simply, again, this radial distance, which I just calculated to be r sine theta, times the angular increment d phi, which means that this dA is equal this times this, and that is r d theta times r sine theta d phi, or that is further equal r squared uh, sine theta d theta d phi. Now it's very easy to generalize this to volume element using this equation because I just multiply this by dr. So I will get that r squared sine theta d theta d phi dr is the volume element of a sphere. While these concepts were simple, we will use them a lot. Already in the next video, we are going to use our expression for the surface element in spherical coordinate system to investigate solid angle. What is a solid angle? Well, it's a projection of an area of an object on a unit sphere. Why is that important? How do we use it, for example, in the concept of kinetic theory of gases? How do we use it in uh, some other fields of atmospheric sciences and physics? You will see in my next video. Until then, goodbye.